Acute liver failure assumes that you have a healthy patient who has no problems with the liver, and then some insult, whether it be a drug, whether it be low oxygen levels, whether it be a virus, then damage a significant portion of the liver where the person cannot sustain themselves. In order to understand the signs of liver failure, you need to understand what the liver does. If the liver maintains your glucose control, then your sugar can be very low. If the liver clots your blood, then you'll have bleeding. If the liver clears toxins from your body that make you confused, you'll be very confused. Uh, the liver also uh, makes the main protein that circulates in our blood that stops us, that holds blood in, in uh, holds volume, the liquid part of our blood in the blood vessel. So when your liver starts to fail, you start to leak and ooze fluid into multiple parts of your body, including your brain, which is very dangerous, called cerebral edema, and can result in the brain swelling to the point where it cuts off its own blood supply, a very serious consequence of acute liver failure, or it can, it can distribute into your lung where you develop problems with uh, requiring intubation or pr for protection of your airway and to deliver the, the gases that are necessary. So acute liver failure is a medical emergency. It's managed by a comprehensive team that can not only manage the acute liver failure, but also offer rescue therapy through transplantation. There's a number of things that need to be supported in the setting of acute liver failure. So, you know, we usually say, you know, sort of glibly is that the, the, the heart's just the pump, the kidney's just the filter, but the liver does a lot of different things. So the liver maintains your sugar in your body. So it's involved with storing sugar, it's involved with mobilizing sugar. So patients with liver failure, acute liver failure, will drop their sugar if not, and we need to supply that. The liver also makes the factors that clot your blood. So patients will not clot their blood normally, can have a number of bleeding uh, issues. Uh, some of them could be life-threatening, such as bleeding into your brain, which can kill you. Uh, the liver is also involved with maintaining lipid, the control of lipids in your body, and that needs to be monitored in the setting of liver failure. The liver also metabolizes or breaks down chemicals in our body that would normally make us confused. But the reason we don't get confused is because we have a functioning liver that clears these things. When the liver doesn't do that, when the liver is in failure, we get very confused and patients can slip into coma requiring, uh, requiring, issues, with, uh, uh, requiring issues related to poor airway protection and other things. So the, uh, the liver also makes factors that protect us against infection. So patients with liver failure are at very high risk of infection, and that needs to be monitored closely. So a comprehensive team, including an ICU, so these patients will not be on a regular floor, will not be managed at home in acute liver failure. They'll be in an intensive care unit. They'll be married, uh, followed very closely by our team, our surgeons, the neurologists, the neurosurgeons, if necessary, the intensivists, to... to, to hopefully bridge them to recovery, if not to liver transplantation. Liver transplantation for acute liver failure outcome in general is good. Um, the patient do really well after the procedure. Liver transplant procedure includes two components. One is to remove the old liver, diseased liver, and replace it with a new liver, which is the donor liver. The donor liver it can come from cadaver or from the living person. In addition to the standard liver transplant options, we offer auxiliary transplantation, which is unique to our program. Auxiliary uh, liver transplantation refers to a doing a liver transplant retaining part of the native liver, meaning that we don't take out the entire liver, like in a standard liver transplant. We only take half of the liver, a piece of the liver, and we transplant piece of liver at the area where uh, the native liver piece was removed. It's a very long name, but we call it auxiliary partial orthotopic liver transplantation, APOLT, APOLT. APOLT um, is an ideal option because we retain portion of the own liver. So when own liver recovers, we can let the transplanted liver rejected, and you can go back to your own liver. So in standard liver transplantation, you have to remove the entire liver. In acute liver failure, liver may still recover, but once the child undergoes standard liver transplant, you no longer have own liver, so there's no chance of going back to own liver. APOLT is an ideal option because we retain the native liver. When the child liver is not working, we use the transplant liver so that child doesn't have a brain damage. But once the native liver recover, 
we don't, we don't need a liver. Uh, we no longer need a transplanted liver. We can let the transplanted liver reject. You can go back to your own liver. With all these options included, availability of the organ for children is great. The ability to care for a child with liver failure at every end of the spectrum is a strength of New York Presbyterian Hospital. We have a renowned neonatal intensive care unit with expertise in the support of extremely sick babies with all sorts of complicated disorders. The pediatric intensive care unit has a great experience with these children who often will require life support, including ventilator support and attention to protecting the lungs, kidney dialysis, and the nutritional management of complex disorders. The rapid evolution of this disorder, in addition to requiring the support of many medical experts, requires great family support on the part of social workers, psychiatrists, and the medical care team in terms of a rapid education of the family about what is ahead, as well as help with adapting to the tremendous stresses that occur. The liver transplant may have to be performed emergently within hours or days of the time the child arrives at New York Presbyterian. Our liver transplant surgical and anesthesia team are experts and are available 24 hours, seven days a week to do the evaluation as well as the transplant. We have successfully transplanted a number of child, children with living donor liver transplants in the circumstance of acute liver failure.